On behalf of Midmark, welcome to the clinical instruction training video for the IQ Spiro. Spirometry is an effective test for early detection and monitoring of COPD, asthma, and other pulmonary disease. A spirometer measures how much air the patient can exhale after a maximal inspiration, as well as how hard and fast they can exhale. The IQ Spiro system offers you the speed, accuracy, and ease of use that makes it a useful, cost-effective device and software for detecting and managing pulmonary disease. The IQ Spiro meets or exceeds the 2005 ATS standards. This tutorial is intended as an overview of the IQ Spiro and will guide you through the setup, calibration, preparation, and coaching of your patient as well as performing the test and basic interpretation of results. The tutorial will show you how to perform a forced vital capacity test or FVC, flow volume loop or FVL, as well as a post bronchodilator test when using the Midmark IQ Manager software. In this video, the IQ Spiro is being operated with the IQ Manager software. For EHR EMR customers, please contact Midmark Support Services at 1-800-624-8950, option 2, for any additional instruction you may need. To begin, we will review the package contents and setup of the IQ Spiro. The IQ Spiro comes in a carrying case with an operations manual CD, quick reference guide, Instructions for putting the IQ Spiro in PCP mode, 10 nose clips, 10 disposable mouthpieces, and the IQ Spiro device. The ATS and Midmark recommend that you check the calibration of the IQ Spiro every day before use. To perform a calibration check of the IQ Spiro, you must first install the IQ Manager software. Please refer to Section 3 of the Operations Manual for complete installation instructions. Once the IQ Manager software has been installed, open the software by double-clicking on the IQ Manager icon on the desktop. In the opening software screen, click on the Spirometer Calibration button. This will take you to the Calibration Utility screen. Click on the spirometer icon in the upper left corner to start calibration. The first time you calibrate your IQ Spiro, the following information needs to be entered in the appropriate boxes. The user performing the calibration, the syringe's serial number, which is located on the bottom of the syringe, and the IQ Spiro's serial number, which is located in the top of the device. Calibrating the IQ Spiro requires a 3-liter syringe. Midmark strongly recommends using the Midmark 3-liter syringe and included Midmark syringe adapter. The barometric pressure must be entered prior to the first time you calibrate the spirometer. To enter the barometric pressure, click on the Settings button and then click on the Calibration tab. If you don't know the barometric pressure, select Calculate Barometric Pressure from Altitude and enter the altitude. The software will automatically calculate and store the usual barometric pressure for that altitude. Now, click on the OK button. The IQ Spiro must be calibrated using an IQ Spiro disposable mouthpiece. To load a mouthpiece into the device, line the pins of the mouthpiece up with the ports of the spirometer and press the mouthpiece in place. Next, close and latch the spirometer door. To set up the spirometer for calibration, Connect the USB or serial cable of the device into the computer and check to see that the green light is on, indicating the device has power. Attach the large end of the syringe adapter to the calibration syringe and the small end of the adapter to the disposable mouthpiece that is attached to the spirometer. Never calibrate the device with a syringe that fits inside the disposable mouthpiece. Always use the syringe adapter when calibrating the spirometer. Click New Cal on the calibration screen and click Start Cal. The sensor will zero itself and then the calibration pump screen appears. Pull the plunger all the way out and inject the air from the syringe into the spirometer. It is important to maintain a smooth, steady motion when performing the calibration. 
use the red dotted line and or the blue timer arrow as a target flow rate. After three correctly performed calibration checks, the system will automatically calculate a correction factor and prompt you to perform one verification pump. The spirometer will display a pass or fail message once the calibration procedure has been completed. The ATS recommends that the verified volume should be between 2.89 and 3.10 plus or minus 3.5 percent to be accepted. Refer to the Operations Manual, Section 3, for further detailed instructions. The IQ Manager software contains a calibration log that retains all calibrations performed for the spirometer. To view and or print the calibration log, go to the Calibration Utility screen and click on the View Calibration Log button. Before plugging the IQ Spyro into the computer, make sure that the IQ Manager software has been properly installed. Before testing patients, it is suggested that you check and change any desired settings. To customize the IQ Manager software, click on the Configuration button. Enter your institution name and address and other information in this screen, and then click on the Spirometer Settings button. At the top of this screen are nine tabs. Click on each tab to find, enter, and or change information in that field. If you click on the Interpretation tab, you can change the primary and secondary reference equations. NHANES is the most recent reference equation and is fully validated. We highly recommend its use for patients between the ages of 8 and 80. The Incentive tab allows you to pick the incentive you want on the screen during testing, and there are five incentives to choose from. For complete information on the data included in all of the Spirometer Settings tabs, refer to Section 3D of the Operations Manual. To perform an FVC test, click on the IQ Manager icon and then click on either the Patient List button or New Patient button. In this example, we will be setting up a new patient. It is essential that you correctly enter the patient name, ID if required, and the race, age, sex, and height of the patient, or what we refer to as the rash in this screen. Other information needs to be entered here, such as smoking history, medications, patient history, and risk factors. If the patient is a smoker and you have entered smoking history information, the test will display a lung age and COPD risk for the patient. This information is often useful for smoking cessation. Next, click on the New Test button. You will see that a new test screen appears. On the left of the screen, select the test type. On the right side of the screen, enter the data required and click on OK. We will review the proper patient preparation before beginning spirometer testing. Reliable and reproducible spirometry results with fewer repeats depend on proper patient preparation, coaching, and patient effort. You are the key to successfully guiding the patient through this testing process. In order to get good test results, it is suggested that the following patient pre-test preparations be followed. Measure the patient's height. An accurate measuring device should be used. If the patient can't stand for the measurement, measure their arm length from fingertip to fingertip while their arms are outstretched against a wall. Since FVC values are greatly influenced by the height of the patient, height should be measured to the nearest half inch. A sitting position is recommended during testing as it may be safer for the patient if they experience syncope or dizziness while performing the forced expiratory maneuver. If prior testing took place with the patient standing, you can perform a new test with them sitting, but make a note of the change. If a patient stands during testing, it is recommended that a chair with arms and without wheels be placed directly behind them in the event that the patient needs to be seated quickly. Ask the patient to loosen any restrictive clothing. If the patient has dentures, have them place them in a cup during testing. Use of a nose clip is highly suggested during the testing procedure. Avoid cross-contamination by disposing of each disposable mouthpiece and replacing it with a new one for each patient. Explain to the patient that they will be performing a minimum of three and a maximum of eight testing maneuvers and always wash your hands. Now you are ready to give the patient the instruction they will need to perform a proper spirometry test.
The accuracy of spirometry testing depends on proper patient instruction and coaching. After patient instruction is given, it is essential that the clinician demonstrate the correct way to perform the test. It is recommended that you explain the purpose of spirometry to your patient. And the purpose of spirometry is to measure how much air you can take into your lungs and how much air you can blow out of your lungs hard and fast. It's kind of like blowing out birthday candles on a birthday cake. And we want you to blow out until you're all the way empty. Next, using a mouthpiece for instruction, explain to the patient that they will be holding the mouthpiece up and to the side of their face and inhaling as deeply as possible. Then instruct them to quickly put the mouthpiece in the mouth with the tongue under the mouthpiece, teeth and lips around it, sealing the lips around the mouthpiece, and blast out as hard and fast as possible. Make sure the patient knows not to block the opening of the mouthpiece with their tongue or teeth. To emphasize that you are taking a deep breath, throw back the shoulders and widen your eyes. The correct posture during the test is to have your shoulders back, chin up, and don't lean or bend forward as you exhale. The normal tendency of your patient is to lean or bend forward while exhaling forcefully. Ask the patient for permission to place your hand on their shoulder during testing. If they start to lean forward, you can quickly and gently help correct their posture. Having a patient visually focus on something at eye level, such as an incentive screen, can help them maintain correct posture, which will result in better test performance. There are five incentive screens to choose from in the IQ Manager software. The IQ Spiro device is easy to grasp and control. However, your pediatric patients with smaller hands will have a much easier time holding the device with both hands. For pediatric patients, it is recommended to use an incentive screen to help them successfully complete the maneuver. Now it is time to perform an FVC test with your patient. First, get a new disposable mouthpiece and open the package from the end closest to the single pin. This is the exhalation end of the mouthpiece and is safe to handle. You should avoid handling the patient inhalation side of the mouthpiece. Open the door to the IQ Spiro and line the pins of the mouthpiece up with the ports in the device. Press the mouthpiece into the ports. Now close and latch the spirometer door. Hand your patient nose clips and have them put them on and then hand them the IQ Spiro. Instruct the patient to hold the spirometer up and to the side of their face. Click on Start New Test and the device will take a few seconds to zero. Make sure there is no movement of air through the spirometer while it is zeroing. Now it's time to coach your patient. Take your deep breath in, deep, 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 mouthpiece in your mouth and blast out hard and fast. Keep blowing, keep blowing. Come on, keep coming, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, blow, 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 blow. Beautiful. Observation of the patient during testing is critical to help identify any errors such as leaks, coughing, incorrect posture, and poor patient effort. If there are any adjustments or corrections that need to be made, address them now. Sit up straight, sit up straight, sit up straight. It is suggested that you wait at least one minute or until the patient is ready to perform the next maneuver. When the patient is ready, click on Start New Test and perform the next maneuver. Repeat the procedures a third time or until a patient has two maneuvers that are reproducible or match. Set in the PCP mode, the software will automatically assign a quality score A through F to each maneuver. The IQ Spiro interpretation software will pick the best test. A quality score of A, B, or C is an acceptable, reliable maneuver. A quality score of D or F is an unacceptable test and most likely will need to be repeated. If you wish to override the software and change the best test or accept or reject a specific maneuver, you can do so in the patient testing screen. Once the patient has successfully completed their spirometry maneuvers, the disposable mouthpiece can be ejected from the spirometer. To eject the disposable mouthpiece, open the spirometer door and use your thumb to press down on the eject lever and the mouthpiece will drop into the trash receptacle. The next step is to click the Save Review button to save this test session and display the review screen. To perform a flow volume loop, follow the steps above and at the end of the patient exhalation, 
coach the patient to take a deep inhalation before removing the mouthpiece. Deep breath in. Nicely done. To perform a post-bronchodilator test, you must follow the drug manufacturer's administration instruction found in the package insert. Next thing we're going to do is to take some medication and see how well the medication helps in opening up your airways. Once you take your medication, we're going to wait 15 minutes and then retest you again to see if there, this medication makes a difference in your airway function. If you are still in the review screen, simply click on the Perform Post BD button. If you have exited the review screen, click on Patient List from the Start screen and double-click on the patient name. The software will now be in the Patient Data Entry screen and you can click on the pretest that has already been performed. That will take you to the Report screen where you can click on the Perform Post BD button in the upper right-hand corner. The software will now be in the testing screen. A post-bronchodilator test is performed the same as a pre-bronchodilator test. Other tests that can be performed on the IQ Spiro include an MVV and a vital capacity or VC. Once the Save Review button has been clicked, you will be in the Report Summary screen. Test results are displayed in the middle of the display with other useful information displayed in the upper section of the report screen. Click on the tabs to select different viewing options for the report. The drop-down menu provides different display options for the graphs. The report summary screen will also display a lung age if applicable and COPD risk. Printed reports will display patient information, spirometer serial number, test date and time, measurements, graphs, interpretations, and additional analysis of the test results. Multiple test results for the same patient can be trended to compare measurements over time to view changes in the patient's condition. Trending can be accessed in the report summary screen by clicking on the Trending button. Enter the data you want to see and click on the OK button to view a patient's trending report. The IQ Manager software comes with an auto-interpretation feature and you can choose from either the ATS or NHANES logic for interpretation of test results. The interpretation software default setting is on when you receive your spirometer. To access the interpretation settings from the main screen, click on the Configuration button and then click on the Spirometer Settings button. Next, click on the Interpretations tab. Software auto-interpretation is not a substitute for physician interpretation and should be examined with respect to the patient's overall clinical condition. There are two graphs for the FVC maneuver, the volume time curve and the flow volume curve. The flow volume curve makes it easy to see poor expiratory effort and airway obstruction. The volume time curve makes it easy to see the volume of air exhaled in the first second and the flat plateau you should see within six seconds ending the FVC. A normal pattern on the flow volume curve has a rise to a peak and then descends until the FVC is reached at the bottom right corner like the sail on a ship. An obstructive pattern on the flow volume curve is identified by its bowl-shaped pattern. In severe airway obstruction, the flow volume curve is shaped like a rat's tail. On the volume time graph, it takes more time to exhale the air, so a flat plateau is often not obtained. A restrictive pattern is seen on the flow volume curve as a low FVC and the shape of the curve may look like the tip of a missile with a sharp peak and steep decline. The volume time curve shows a plateau that is rapidly reached and the plateau is lower than normal. Help buttons are available in all screens to assist you. Just click on the Help button to access information about the screen you are in. This concludes the IQ Spiro clinical instruction video. For detailed information about this product and its use, please refer to the IQ Spiro Operations Manual or contact us at 1-800-624-8950, option 2. On behalf of Midmark, we would like to thank you for your participation in this clinical instruction training video. Midmark would like to thank Melanie Tutti Giordano, MS, RN, CPFT, for her expertise and participation in this clinical training video. Midmark would like to thank the Cooper Clinic at Craig Ranch for the use of their state-of-the-art facilities during the filming of this video. Thank <laughs> you.